In this video I'm going to show you how to take a 3D scan, convert it into a sub-D quad mesh solid model, all just using the quad remesh tool. Hello, today we're going to look at the quad remesh tool, which uh, is a tool that optimizes mesh topology, and it does a few other cool things too, like uh, you can create some cool sub-D setups with it. Uh, we're going to specifically look at it in its application for 3D scanning and reverse engineering, of course. So this is just the help file here. Um, and I've got this mesh, which is a low poly, relatively low polygon count mesh of a foot. If you ever want to know how many polygons, how many triangles are in a mesh, you can use the reduce mesh command and it will give you an idea 27,414 that is nothing this would have been well over 1 million when it was scanned and it's been reduced using that reduce mesh command uh, I'll cover this another time let me know in the comments if, if you want to know about that because there's a few cool tricks to that one too for scanning and reverse engineering Okay, so we've got a mesh, and uh, just looking back here, now I mostly use Quadri Mesh for reverse engineering and sub-D setups. However, it's also used for CFD, computational fluid dynamics, and FEA finite element analysis, like stress simulation, basically wind simulation and stress simulation rendering mm, to be honest i don't know why it's really used for rendering and animation i also that's not my field of expertise so basically what i normally do is i just type it in quad remesh i usually select the object first and you'll get this box so you've got target quad count which is the approximate amount of quads that uh, it will try to convert this object to be aware that if you go down to say 100 it will process for ages if you go down to a pretty low number uh, you need to approximate from the object you just need to guess you know so start off as a guess 2000 seems good or you've got this option which is target edge length what that means is it will try to keep the edges of the quads the squares to a certain length. Now the other thing I like to press on this is preview because it means we can keep tweaking this box and hide input object. So there you go, look already it's worked pretty well. <coughs> so uh, we won't delete the input object so we'll just press OK and then we can pull it out to the side and compare that. Depending on what you're doing, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good result. And just to look at the topology, look at those beautiful squares compared with this mesh. That said, it has kind of pixelated the foot a little bit. Depends on where you're going, what your application is with this. So we'll run the command again. Quad remesh. This time we'll turn off detect hard edges and we'll just see what the difference is. Okay, so we've got a slightly more organic shape, only ever so slightly. Here it shows you your average edge length, 4.55. Let's um, let's play with that. Let's we'll go target edge length. Now, because target edge length is preset to 1, it's actually going to take a few minutes to process. So, and it said 4.75, so we'll go for 3. We'll see what the 3 looks like as a target edge length. We've got preview and hide input objects, so that is looking great. Okay, let's say we want to make this into a surface model, a nerves model. So we'll hit OK, and... The simplest way to do that is to run the two nerves command. 
delete import objects, no. And let's go for it. Okay, so we've converted our mesh to a surface model. Um, lots of tiny surfaces. Basically, every quad had a... Every quad on here turns into a surface on here. That said, it's a closed poly surface, which is what you want. Um, and now you can do all the NURBS operations, like Boolean differences. Uh, well, let's just give that a try quickly. Now, I will say it is a very dense, it is a very dense poly surface, so this may fail. But let's give it a go. Boolean union. Okay, it worked. Okay. So, yeah, that's quad remesh. Optimizing the quads to a number that's not too high. And then turning it into a NURBS model. So, I might just put some text here. Oh, actually, I won't bother. Okay. What else can we do with this command? We'll run it again. Quad remesh. Okay. We'll go back to target quad count and we'll we'll play with the symmetry axis quickly, which can be a bit of fun. So we'll what we'll do is we'll increase the quad count so it's not having to process too much. That makes it easier because it has to do less calculation around complex areas. We'll go to preview, hide input objects. See how fast that processed. And now, let's just for a laugh, run a symmetry axis on Z. Okay. Well, it looks like a pair of legs. I don't really know what you'd want that for. But you kind of get the idea. You can go on Y. Well, Y didn't really do anything. And you can go on X. X didn't do anything either. Okay, X and Z gives an interesting result. Now, just run that again. Okay, we're going to target quad count 2500, preview, hide input object, and let's try and convert it to a sub D. Now, for, let's say we needed to edit the shape in an easy way, so that would be sub D. So convert to sub D. And we'll see what it comes up with. And hide the input object. Okay, that's what it's giving us for sub D. Now, with sub D, I generally tend to want less, as few chords as I can get. So let's drop that down to 1,000. And the computer's calculating. Okay, 1,000, oh, it's not far off, but see these toes are a little bit <laughs> average, so let's see what happens if we detect hard edges. Oh, that was a quad count of 100, right, no wonder why that was, uh, that was so, well, that was pretty good for 100. Okay, so 100 is, you know, looking at that, 100 is not far off. So let's see what, I don't know, 300 looks like, I reckon it might be close. Hey, well that's looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and select that. Okay, all right, and let's just say that we needed to make, let's just say we needed to edit the toes here. Well, you could control shift select, oops, you could control shift and select the end of the toe here and just wiggle it up a little bit, there we go. You can make these nice organic changes with the sub D model. <coughs> then from there you can also go to NURBS and create a NURBS model, a surface model. I've just updated the the different methods that we've gone from our original 3D scan. And another one I thought I should touch on 
is the interpolate sub D. So we'll click our 3D scan, quad remesh. 300, yep, same as last time. Preview, hide input object. Just wait for that to generate. Okay, now you can see that we're not a hundred, well, we're pretty close actually. We're not a hundred percent on our scan. So what we can do is make it more accurate with interpolate sub D. See the difference that made? That dual color means that the two objects are on each other. So interpolate sub D gets us a bit more accuracy from our 3D scan. Possibly a slightly suboptimal quad flow, flow of quad quads for editing compared with that, but it may be worth the trade-off. Uh, so we'll just so just move that out and oops, wrong way around. We'll just move that out and we'll call that sub D interpolated. Okay, better put the circle around the 3D scan. That's the original. There we go. Let's say you wanted to, I don't know, cut the foot shape from a different solid model that you had. And you, for whatever reason, didn't want to use mesh boolean. What would be a good way to do that? Well, I think we would go 3D scan, interpolated sub D, and then we could go two nerves. One closed poly surface. So it's solid model. Then from there, we could cut this out of here. Not sure why you'd want to do that. I'm not a shoemaker. Um, although I think it's a highly interesting field. Putting difference, that one. As you can see, that operation worked. Alternatively, possibly something more likely, is we could cut the bottom of the foot flat. Because it's a solid, we could cut the bottom of the foot flat. Let's try that. Putting difference. Okay, yeah, I think this is more likely. Okay, then let's say we want to edit the bottom of that. Well, we can go for an another, we can jump straight from a solid model to a interpolated sub D. So, quad remesh, preview, hide input objects, let's see what we get. We might have to up our count, but we'll see. We shouldn't have to. Okay, let's have a look at this. All right, that's looking pretty promising. And we may also want to use detect hard edges. And around now, I'm kind of thinking, do we want to increase our quad count? Okay, and then, then we also want to allow the sub D to crease. And we'll go for the preview again. You can see it's generating down here. We'll hide the input. Okay, that's as good as we're going to get, unless I'm guessing we up the quad count. So let's go 400. Okay, getting a little bit sharper. Okay, back to sub D. Let's side note, make a few changes. Maybe bring the heel out a little bit, which is really well suited to sub D.
I don't know, just as an example. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Okay, and now we can go back to nerves. So yeah, there you go. There's a bit of an intro to using the quad remesh tool. Thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I'm trying to improve my video making skills a little bit every time. Uh, if you could just take the time to like the video or subscribe, that would be awesome. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. At the moment, I answer every question. <laughs> um, and yeah, once I get better at making the videos, I'll be releasing a course, an intensive course on 3D scanning, reverse engineering, not just for Rhino users, but also for people who currently use SolidWorks, Fusion 360, um, teaching them how to also use Rhino for reverse engineering. Thank you.